And welcome back everybody and today we are going to explore how to set your ripple timing when doing bomb runs in the F4 Phantom and that involves these knobs right down there and the math on this can get a little puzzling but we're going to try to make some sense out of that for you guys today so we're going to just jump right into it. Now to get your weapons spaced apart at a fixed interval from each other, we need three things. We need speed, we need distance, and we need time. Time is controlled with the intervalometer knob down there on your aerial weapons release unit or aircraft weapon release unit. Uh, speed is controlled by the speed of our aircraft, aka how much throttle are we using. And distance is us the function of speed versus time. We just have to do a little bit of simple math in order to get the timing set on that knob, fly a specific speed, hold down the weapon release button, assuming everything else is set up on your weapons release panel, and let the bombs fly. Now, a lot of what I'm going to share with you is meant for fast, low level, emphasis on level attacks. Uh, this, uh, whenever you start to involve dive angles and uh, you're getting into trigonometry and the math on that gets a little bit more complex but doable. And I'll cover that in a future video for doing diving attacks. This one's just going to focus on the concepts of getting the release timing set up correctly. Now modern aircraft makes this a lot simpler for us in that they have the fancy weapons computers and then we can just simply click a couple buttons, tell it how far apart we want the bombs and it doesn't matter how we fly as long as it's not upside down that it will calculate the release interval for us and all we have to do is fly put the pipper on the target hold down the button and it handles the rest super easy but it's not as easy in the older aircraft but it's not as complex as you may think all right so a lot of what I'm going to share is also uh, applicable to a lot of the older aircraft like the F-14 Tomcat. Uh, small difference here, uh, the release timing is set up in the back seat in the Rio's uh, cockpit. So, And that is on the left vertical panel under delivery options. There's your release timing with these little thumb wheels right here. And this is set up in milliseconds, just like it is in the F-4 Phantom. All right, this also works in the F5E Tiger. However, your release interval is a lot less complicated and it's on a three position toggle switch uh, with that interval setting over there, 0 0.06, 0 0.10, and 0.14. Which, fun fact, this is also what the old school F4 Phantoms used before they got the fancier weapons release panels. Back in the F4 Phantom, so how do we calculate our bomb spacing? Well, it takes a little bit of pre-planning. So you need to plan for a specific attack speed and you have to fly that attack speed. Otherwise the spacing is going to be off. So I want to plan a attack run on that runway just ahead of me. I want my bombs 200 feet apart from each other. So I want to pick an airspeed that I know that I can reliably achieve. So I'm going to fly that attack profile at 450 knots. I need to convert that into feet per second. So one nautical mile is 6,076 feet. We multiply that by 450. And then divide that number by 3,600 which gives us our feet per second, which is 759.5 feet per second. So you have to, um, the math there is 450 times the feet, that is feet per hour. Then you gotta divide that by 60 to get feet per minute, and then 60 again to get feet per second. So 60 times 60 is 3,600. So if you divide the first number by 3600, you can skip a step and get straight to feet per second. So in our case, again, that's 759.51 feet per second. So now that we know how fast our aircraft is flying through the air at 450, which again is 759, we know our, we know our planned 
uh, bomb spacing, which is 200 feet. So 200 divided by 759 equals 0 0.26332 seconds. So, and we can round this. You don't have to be super precise. You do want to get close, uh, don't get me wrong, but you don't have to be super precise. So 0.26 seconds, and then we can come down here on our interval knob, wind that around, and just a smidge past 0.25, that'll do. All right, now that I got about 0.26 set on my interval knob, let's go ahead and set up the rest of the weapons. I'm carrying 12 Blue 107, the Durandal anti-runway bombs. So I'm going to release all 12 in one go. So 12 bombs on my quantity. Set to bomb mode. I'll go direct. I'll have them on the inboard and center pylons. And make sure you arm your fuses. That is the switch that's kind of tucked in behind the clock. Very easy to overlook and forget about. Otherwise, your bombs will not go boom. All right. Lastly, master arm. We got our arm indicators. Pylons are armed. We are ready to go. Now, uh, the reticle is not as important in doing these low-level fast runs, but I like to dial in 100, so it's just a little bit more... About where I need it as far as getting them a good run in. All right, I'll come off active pause and let's do this. So if you are dealing with any sort of winds in your mission, don't reference the airspeed gauge. Look over here in the corner for true airspeed. The closer you can get to your pre-planned attack run, and in my case, I'm trying to shoot for 450 knots. I'm a little too fast, so if you're faster than planned, your bombs are going to be spaced farther apart. If you're slower than your planned speed, they're going to they're going to fall a lot closer together. So I need to slow down. The tighter that you can get to your planned attack speed, the more accurate that they will fall where they need to be based on your calculation. As I'm lining up for this attack run, coming in nice, fast, and low. So I'm doing an anti-runway attack. So for those that aren't aware, uh, anytime you hit a runway in DCS with a bomb, the AI cannot use that runway for an hour. That is just how it's coded in the DCS. That may change in the future, I don't know, but that's it's been that way for the longest time. So if especially if you're in a multiplayer mission, and you're dealing with AI, you want to shut down an enemy airfield, hit the runway with at least one bomb, and they will not be able to use that airfield for an hour. Now, craters will damage landing gear, so any human-flown aircraft, you uh, if you hit a crater with the landing gear, you have a high likelihood of damaging your landing gear. Uh, and that includes uh, taxing over that. You can uh, collapse a strut. On, we've done that with the Warbird sometimes. All right, coming in nice, fast, and low. A little slower than planned, 444. Trying to get 450. Pretty darn close. Here we go. These fast, low-level runs are pretty cool. I love doing these, especially with high drag bombs or these Durandals. They're just, they're just fun. And pickle and hold. Let me point the jets in a safe direction, and we'll go down and check out our cratering. I'd say we did pretty darn good with that. There's all my craters starting from the first one. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'd say we achieved a pretty good spacing. 
I wish the Turin dolls did more anti-runway damage like their real-life counterparts uh, versus just a standard Mark 82, but I left holes in the runway and that effectively shuts down this runway for an hour like I mentioned. So, I'd say we did pretty good. Not too shabby. If I'm not mistaken, all these lines are about 500 feet apart from one another. I did a 200 foot spacing. Yeah, I think uh, we're darn close to being on the money. Nice. All right, everybody. I hope that gave you guys a solid understanding on how to set up the intervalometer for rippling off some bombs. Now, I do want to point out that also works for doing ripple release on rockets. So if you set up for rippling off uh, rockets from rocket pods, uh, that timer setting will determine how quickly rockets are fired from your pods. So uh, I also want to emphasize that the math that I shared with you earlier, that is good for doing fast, low level, straight and level attack runs. So anytime you're dealing with uh, uh, dive angles or uh, if you're doing loft deliveries or anytime that you have to use the bombing calculator, uh, follow the uh, set up the interval based on the bombing calculator all right i'll also leave the formula for this down in the video description uh below so you guys can use that for planning out your own attack runs for doing fast and low uh fast and low attacks so with that thank you guys for watching and i'll catch you in the next one